Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Another real hot day and humid day. So you'll hear the air running in the background. I went back to the shed, pulled out an Airmaster radio. This is probably just the trade name. I think I looked at this many years ago, maybe made by Automatic. Got uh, two of the knobs, one missing, no big deal there. Uh, the grill cloth you can see is a little used up. May be able to save it though straighten it out clean it up a nice uh, scuff mark here unfortunately right over the air master uh, logo may be able to uh, save that if not uh, possibly reproduce it the uh, cabinet though is a pretty cool looking design i didn't see any other examples online of this particular receiver if you guys uh, see one let me know we'll look at the tubes here in just a moment um, some nice uh, molding in detail on the uh, front corners. Flip it around here. The lighting's not that great at this angle. But it looks like we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six tubes. But one appears to be a ballast, or at least somebody has marked ballast on the uh, back side of the chassis and pencil a BM 49 Baker so we'll check that out as well again no transformer just a ballast tube to reduce the uh, AC line voltage we'll look at the tubes let me get the uh, chassis out that'll give us an indication of the age probably mid 1930s would be my uh, guess at this point one other thing that was interesting you can see the uh, badge or emblem that's been put on here. It makes me wonder if this cabinet was universal. So I'll look for some others that are similar, maybe made by automatic, scan some photos, uh, possibly an iTube. You guys uh, chime in, let me know what you uh, think. It's been covered up, you can see. So as found, and again, this has been in storage for uh, probably 15 years or so, untouched. Let me uh, pull the chassis out. We'll look at the tube complement, then find a uh, matching schematic. Pretty cool. You can see the uh, felt behind the knobs here on the tube. A real thick felt at that. closer look at the uh, dial before I spin this thing around and remove the uh, fasteners underneath. You can see it did have the old uh, police band which was just above uh, 1600 kilohertz. Looks like just three fasteners holding the chassis to the cabinet. I'll get those removed. Be right back. And that's it. Should be able to uh, pull the chassis straight out. <laughs> And the dial cover just popped off when I pulled this out. We can uh, reproduce that to no big. Quick look inside the cabinet. I'll try to show some more shots of that here in just a bit. Get the uh, cabinet off to the side. Chassis looks uh, complete. One tube here just hanging out of the uh, socket. Let's see if we can make it out. The uh, rectifier. 25Z5. See one little tear there in the uh, loudspeaker. Should be able to repair it, hopefully. It's all warped up though. Not a big deal though. Place a new cone on there if that's a, a problem. Tuning is uh, somewhat free, a little tight. And the uh, on off volume control. See the one dial light there? That cone is uh, more used up than I thought. You can see how warped it is. Let's look underneath this thing. See if it's been worked on at some point in its life. It's definitely had some service work done on it in the past. I can see some of the original uh, paper or wax caps have been replaced through the years. Makes me wonder if these are original, but maybe they're replacements as well, but uh, various brands from various dealers back for that period of time. Looks like a, a simple set, an easy one to probably uh, make operational again. 
I think it's uh, going to be a pretty straightforward restoration, not much rust, just a little cleanup of the chassis. The uh, underneath space to work with is uh, wide open. Definitely needs a new line cord. I can see it's dry rotted. I'll inspect the uh, remaining wiring just to make sure. Everything is uh, good and safe there. Let's uh, pull these tubes out one by one, document it, then just do a uh, search for a matching uh, schematic. Should be rather common again, probably a uh, mid-1930 receiver. I'm going to go ahead and clip this uh, line cord. Just get it out of my way. In addition, the uh, lead that somebody placed on here for the antenna. Remove that as well so I don't do any damage here to the uh, antenna coil. We'll get this first tube out, again connected back to the uh, antenna coil. So this should be our uh, oscillator converter tube. Uh, may or may not show up there, 6 alpha 7. It's going to be our first uh, tube here, amplifier, maybe a 6 delta 6, something similar to that. You see it coming off of the uh, IF transformer. And it has a uh, tube shield, of course. Okay, good guess on my part, or lucky guess, 6 delta 6. And possibly the detector tube. Yep, 6Q7G. And let's see what this little guy is here. It's like a 6SN7GT. 6SN7GT. Let's see what the big guy is here. Probably the uh, audio output tube. Yep. 25L6G, 25L6G. And the uh, last tube back here that was dangling, rectifier 25Z5. So where's the uh, ballast? I'm going to go ahead and check the uh, fill coil. I found a uh, matching schematic. There's a few out there. I think this thing probably was produced by automatic back in the day. There's uh, two or three matching schematics for this particular uh, chassis. So um, should be an easy uh, repair. I'll reference those along the way. And what I mentioned earlier, there's the uh, line cord tie-in points to the uh, tube socket second over where the uh, 6SN7G tube was placed. Should be the uh, ballast. I'll recheck all this to see if um, the tubes were placed in the uh, correct sockets. There may be others out of, uh, out of order as well. Yeah, one thing I failed to mention again, the uh, BM49 Baker uh, ballast tube. Again, if this was the uh, correct location for it. Just referencing that, that was very common back in the day. It was uh, designed to operate around 300 milliamps, and I think all the other tubes are rated at around uh, 300 milliamps as well. I'll confirm that as well, that the uh, voltage drop, again, the Clue BM49, 49 representing the uh, voltage drop across the um, tube itself. So just doing the math, again, the uh, 49 would put us very close if we're using uh, modern day voltages of 120 minus the string will be, you know, plus or minus 10%, so no big deal there. I think I can tell where the uh, lead wires head out for the uh, fill coil.
and you can see we're reading about 433 ohms. A couple schematics that I reference, if I can make out, looks like 450. Again, that's uh, great news. No issues there. Again, the fill coil is cold. The DC resistance will only increase as the uh, receiver's brought up. Turn the AC off. You may be able to hear that. Generating a tone at uh, 1,000 uh, hertz or 1 kilohertz. And you can hear the uh, audio. Just vary the frequency. Again, electrodynamic loudspeaker. I don't have the fill coil energized, so at least we know the voice coil and output transformer is good or appears to be good. It's letting the audio pass through at this point. I'm just attached to the uh, plate and screen grid where the uh, output tube would uh, be placed, the 25L6. And just for the fun of it, I'm going to energize the fill coil just using a 9-volt battery. You can hear the difference that makes. De-energize the fuel coil. Big difference. Just a look at the chassis from overhead. I don't really see any rust. That's a great sign. Just a lot of uh, dust and crud that needs to be uh, cleaned up. I was just testing the LC circuit, the uh, antenna coil that is, and the tuning condenser for the broadcast side using my little LC tester. Tuning around, and I've got a uh, short wire antenna hooked up to the uh, antenna input. I think this capacitor here is uh, completely open. Let me uh, bypass it, and I'll show you the difference here. Got some storms in the area. Discharge. Let me switch back. You can hear the difference. Just an old dried up cap, I'm sure. I first thought I might have problems with the antenna coil. It's a little crusty looking, too. It's pretty cool. The uh, chassis is large enough here underneath. And uh, for this case, Instead of using a uh, power resistor to uh, drop the additional voltage that I need, I'll use a capacitor. It'll be nice and cool. Got plenty of room here to uh, mount. Probably an 8 microfarad, again, AC capacitor, rated at about 250 volts or so. I think I can squeeze one in right in this area. And I believe I have a couple. So when I get to that point, I'll bring you guys back. I did DC checks on the one IF can or transformer. It was good. The other one I have not checked. Oscillator checks good. Looking at DC resistance. So I think I'll let that loudspeaker be. You can see how warped that is. See that angle. And just see if I can make this thing play again, see what it sounds like, and I may pull it out, try to do something to it. 
So I'll bring you guys back soon. The uh, tuning condenser's a mess. I may just try to blow the uh, crud out of it in the uh, beginning outside. And uh, see if I can get rid of the shorts between the plates doing that.